As Mark just told us, the ECB raised rates for the first time in almost three years. On Tuesday, China raised its key interest rate, the fourth such move in six months. Joining us now to talk about how these changes could affect the global corporate bond market is Greg Hopper. He's portfolio manager of the RDO, did I say it right? Yes, you did. Yeah. Good. RDO yeah. Global High Income Bond Fund, which Bloomberg ranks among the best performing global bond funds for not only the past one, but also the past three and five years. You have a great, great track record, which is why we want to talk to you. Greg, good Thanks, afternoon. Guys. So all of this stuff that's going on and specifically let's talk about the rate moves that we saw with from the ECB uh, today and earlier in the week from China how is that impacting your strategy well you know there's an increase in rates around the world outside the US in Europe in particular that 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 is concerning people because they're raising rates at the same time that you have the peripheral cu countries Greece Portugal Ireland uh, really struggling um, we tend to focus on uh, corporate credit. We uh, focus on high yield bonds in particular. Um, and that's created a risk premium in European domiciled high yield securities, which normally you don't see in, in, in a normal kind of environment. Mm. Um, we think that provides opportunity because, uh, among other things, we think the baby's being thrown out with a bathwater. So you're exactly. investing there specifically? We are in trying to increase our exposure. We, we think uh, that investors should be at least neutral to Europe uh, in, in our realm of credit. Um, we think that's advantageous. What, what kind of risk premium do you see? And is it specific mm -hmm. to certain uh, countries or is it specific right. to certain sectors? Well, the European high yield market as a whole is providing a premium of about 50 basis points in terms of you know, spread over government curves, which is, you, as I say, normally you don't see that uh, unless it's a real you know, you know, catastrophe that's going on. Um, at, which it know, isn't, in your view? Which, well, <laughs> it's not like it was 18 months ago, that's for sure. Um, and high yield in Europe, actually, on a rating basis, is a bit uh, higher quality than the U.S. Um, I would also point out that there are a number of issuers in Europe who are uh, very uh, well-honed export companies that can take advantage, uh, particularly of Eastern Europe. Um, we think that there could be value there. So, so we like to drill down. Can you be mm -hmm. more specific for us? Because you mentioned that there are some. Can you be more specific? Well, I, I, I don't generally like to get into names, but I don't, they don't like to uh, give my secrets away. But um, if you think about Germany and the Mittelstand kind of companies, um, many of which have issued high yield uh, bonds over the last few years, um, th these are interesting companies and are probably being given the same risk premium that that whole market is being given. On the other side of the spectrum, you have healthcare companies that should normally be non-cyclical, a little more stable, um, that are sporting premiums that are, or sporting yields, I should say, that are, are substantially in excess of very comparable uh, companies here in the U.S. Mm. So we think that that provides an so, opportunity. So you're basically uh, getting a premium, uh, bigger spreads than you normally would see over mm. already elevated interest rates of, of, right. of those countries' government debt. Right. In uh, the German Mittelstand, what, what is it really a booming economy, right? Uh, well, it, it certainly has proven itself to be able to withstand some, some, some real challenges. Make no mistake about it, when you really lift up the cover on any of these companies, um, you know, they, they, they don't do it in their sleep. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, difficulties that they have to overcome, but historically they've been able to do that better than, than many companies the world over. You talk Germany, but what about the more risk? prone areas and I think about the you know usual suspects at this point whether it's Spain whether it's Portugal do you just stay away from that area at this point well you know many of the companies that one invests in that are issuers in Europe will come with some exposure almost inevitably particularly to Spain mm -hmm. um, you know it's just a question of trying to gauge how serious that exposure is and whether it's really a problem or not and generally speaking we don't think it is how do you factor in the rate hike I mean does it concern mm -hmm. you does it slow things down well it, it this is what this is one of the reasons why why you do have a premium in the in European high yield because you, you have rate hikes as I say at the time at a time when parts of the economy need exactly the opposite uh, on top of that you have this specter of European leadership kind of you know always seem to not quite get the full joke if you will uh, and that you know that that leaves investors a little bit uh, cautious um, but that's that is why you're getting the premium uh, and I would argue also that when you're investing in corporate credit, you're investing in, in entities that are drawing their, uh, their base from commercial transactions around the world. They're not governments, right? So one should argue, you could almost argue that spreads, risk spreads, 
should be tighter in this kind of environment mm -hmm. where you're a little more suspect of the government quote unquote risk free curve. We've got to run. We just scratched the surface, yep. but it was good to get some time with you. Greg, thank you yep. so much. Thank Greg you. Hopper. Thanks for having me. You bet. Of the RDO Global High Income Bond Fund.